When the silver stocks move, there isn't enough combined market cap among the legitimate ones to hold the money from the generalist investors. This isn't for the fate of heart. Use money <laughs> that you can stomach volatility on. Be prepared to wait for 18 months or two years. Uh, but that's not too long to wait for a 10-bagger if you have the financial and psychological fortitude. You're watching Silver News Daily. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for the best news that you don't want to miss. Now let's get straight to it. Imagine a world where your investment not only doubles or triples, but skyrockets beyond your wildest dreams. Welcome, my friends, to the Silver Saga, a tale not of fiction, but of untapped wealth waiting just beneath the surface of today's volatile markets. You've heard of gold as the go-to asset in times of uncertainty, but what if I told you there's another metal, often overshadowed yet poised for an extraordinary leap? Yes, I'm talking about silver, but not just any rise in value. We're on the brink of seeing silver explode to a staggering $2,789. You might think it's a far-fetched dream, but when investment legends like Rick Rule are stacking up on silver, calling it the best investment you can make to retire luxuriously in 2024, it's time to pay attention. Why silver, you ask? In a world teeming with financial advice, silver remains the enigma, the sleeper hit of the investment world, severely undervalued and misunderstood by many. Yet, beneath its quiet surface lies a storm of factors ready to catapult its value to unprecedented heights. From the intricacies of its supply and demand to the industrial applications driving its quiet demand, silver is the dark horse of precious metals, ready to outrun gold in the race to value. And with experts like Rick Rule betting big on its imminent rise, it's not just speculation. It's a strategic move backed by decades of market wisdom. But how can we be so sure? Let's peel back the layers of the silver market, unravel the myths surrounding its value, and reveal the seismic shifts about to unfold. As we venture into the heart of this story, remember, the opportunity to transform your portfolio and secure your retirement with silver is not just a possibility. It's within grasp, waiting for the moment when the world recognizes its true worth. Stay with us as we uncover the why, the how, and the when of silver's journey to $2,789, and why holding as much as you can might just be the golden, or should I say, silver, ticket to your financial freedom. I would look at my estate and see me as the largest shareholder of Sprott, uh, and a fairly substantial investor in mining shares too, and saying, why on earth would Rick Rule own gold? He's highly leveraged to gold's future. I own gold as an insurance asset. I don't own it because I think the price might go from $2,000 to $2,270. I own it because I'm afraid of a circumstance that would take the nominal gold price in U.S. dollar terms to $8,000 or $10,000. I buy it as insurance. And like any other insurance class, I actually hope I don't get paid on it. Think about it. Life insurance means somebody that died. <laughs> Auto insurance means your car got stolen or wrecked. Uh, I own gold not because I'm greedy, which I am, but rather because I'm fearful. I consider gold to be good if volatile liquidity. I also maintain U.S. dollar liquidity, despite the fact that I think the real rate of inflation is much higher than the stated rate of inflation. And that means that the spending power that I enjoy for the cash I save is declining despite the fact that I might be getting a four or four and a quarter yield. I do it because I believe that the negative yield, the difference between the decline in the purchasing power and the rate of interest that I get on my savings, uh, I regard that as an option premium. Uh, I think that having cash will, if we experience a liquidity crisis, circa 2008, uh, give me both the tools and the courage to take advantage of that circumstance rather than being taken advantage of by that circumstance. So I continue to hold both gold and short-term uh, U.S. dollar denominated. In today's financial landscape, where every tick of the market pulse sends ripples across the globe, one asset stands out for its remarkable dance between volatility and value, silver. But what is it about this precious metal that commands our attention and warrants a deeper dive? Let's peel back the curtain and explore the current state of silver, a realm of bullish signals amidst the chaos, a beacon for those who know where to look. Silver, with its dual persona as both an industrial giant and a precious metal, has always been a subject of fascination and speculation. Unlike its more illustrious cousin, gold, silver moves with an unpredictability that can be both a challenge and an opportunity for investors. 
In recent sessions, we've witnessed Silver's bullish demeanor, hinting at the undercurrents of change, shaping its trajectory. Technical analysts point to the formation of a massive dou shaped pattern in the silver market, signaling strong support around the $22 level. This isn't just another number on the chart. It's a testament to silver's resilience and the growing interest from traders around the world. But why does this matter? In the realm of investments, where every decision can tip the scale between profit and loss, understanding these patterns offers a glimpse into silver's potential. The market teeters on the edge of a well-defined range, a consolidation phase that has seen silver biding its time, gathering strength. The significance of the $22 support level cannot be overstated. It's the foundation upon which silver's next big leap could be built. A breakthrough above the $23.50 level could propel silver even further, aiming for targets once thought unreachable. Yet beneath the surface of these technical movements lies a deeper story of supply and demand, interest rates, and industrial necessity. Silver's allure isn't just in its volatility, it's in the way it mirrors the broader economic and geopolitical landscape. In times of uncertainty, when the world grapples with shifting power dynamics and financial instability, silver becomes more than just a metal, it becomes a haven, a strategic asset for those looking to protect their wealth. This duality of silver, its ability to thrive both as an investment and an industrial commodity, sets the stage for its potential surge. But to truly grasp the opportunity silver presents, we must venture beyond the charts and the trading floors. We must consider the global trends that drive its demand, the technological advancements that rely on its properties, and the investment strategies that can unlock its value. As we delve deeper into the silver market, remember, the volatility we witness today is but the prelude to a transformation. A transformation that could see silver breaking free from its rain-bound existence, propelled by forces both seen and unseen. The question isn't just whether silver will rise, but how far and how fast. And for those willing to look beyond the immediate fluctuations, the future of silver is as bright as the metal itself. Stay with us as we explore the confluence of factors shaping silver's destiny. From the intricate web of supply and demand to the burgeoning industrial applications driving its quiet demand, we're on a journey to uncover the true value of silver, a journey that promises not just insights, but the potential for unprecedented growth. Silver is the most volatile, I would suggest, of the precious metals. I'm defining the precious metals to be gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Uh, silver traditionally is uh, a second half mover, meaning in precious metals bull markets, the markets are generally led by gold. Once the trend is established and the narrative is, is established, silver for whatever reason, and I'm not sure of the reason, perhaps the lower unit cost, moves further and moves faster than gold. My first attraction to silver, of course, came in the decade of the 1970s. Uh, the cause for that attention was the fact that the silver price moved from, if my memory serves me well, $1.20 to $50, uh, which was certainly a dramatic move. I'm not trying to say that I caught the bottom or that I caught, that I caught the top. But I caught enough of the middle <laughs> that it attracted my attention and has for the rest of my life. Uh, and as dramatic as the moves in silver are, the moves in the silver stocks, possibly because the population of them is so few, is even more extravagant. During that period, the 1970s, one silver stock, Coeur d'Alene Mines, moved from $0.10 cents to $65. Alas, sadly, without me. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, you know, uh, others did what, did fine with it. So I, I would say that there are, from a fundamental point of view, a couple reasons to be interested in silver and silver stocks. But you have to be, uh, I, I would suggest, first of all, a speculator. Hmm. Uh, and you have to be, I would suggest, a contrarian. The easy money will be made in silver and the silver stocks simply from the arbitrage between hated and disgusted and unhated, just as we saw in the uranium stocks. The easy money in the uranium juniors happened as a consequence of them becoming simply less hated, and that will happen with silver too. Mm -hmm. Silver is unique uh, I think, in ways that your listeners need to understand when they're trying to comprehend silver. First of all, most silver 
doesn't come out of silver mines. <laughs> so the supply side is a really interesting conundrum of new mine supply. Last year, I believe 18% of the new mine supply of silver came from silver mines. The rest came from copper mines, gold mines, uh, and lead and zinc mines. So trying to forecast mine production based on the silver price is a fool's errand because gold prices and copper prices and lead prices and zinc prices are more important to silver production than silver prices are. And equating mining costs around prim primary producers is an illusion too, because those costs only pertain to 18% of mined production. Most silver, as a consequence of it being a byproduct or a co-product, uh, requires, from a mining standpoint, only the processing of the silver stream. The costs are paid for by other metals. So the primary cost of production of silver is often less than people think it is. And as the price of silver rises, the supply rises for two reasons that most people don't consider. The first is recycling. Uh, at low silver prices, uh, it is less efficient to recycle. At higher silver prices, it's more efficient to recycle. And the easiest silver to grab is the silver that's already been mined that is recycled as a consequence of uh, industrial utilization. The second is that the above-ground stockpiles of silver uh, are large and almost unknowingly, uh, unknowable unknowably large. Uh, silver still represents uh, a store of value, uh, if you will, off official balance sheets, particularly in South Asia, in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka. A and what you'll find is that when the silver price moves up in, in U.S. dollar terms, uh, particularly when the U.S. dollar moves up relative to South Asian currencies, uh, that uh, South Asian people tend to dishoard their silver, which is to say they tend to be better silver investors than Americans. They tend to buy it low and sell it high, <laughs> unlike us who tend to buy it high and, uh, of course, sell it low. In the world of investing, where opinions are plentiful but genuine wisdom is rare, Rit Rule stands apart as a beacon of insight and foresight. His name is synonymous with success in the realm of precious metals, a testament to his deep understanding of the market's ebbs and flows but what makes Rick Rule's perspective on silver so compelling? It's not just his track record of identifying undervalued assets before they soar. It's his contrarian approach to investing, a philosophy that has consistently unearthed gems in the most unexpected places. Rick Rule's interest in silver is not a newfound fascination. It's a conviction built on decades of observation, analysis, and most importantly, action. He views silver through a lens that captures its intrinsic volatility and potential for explosive growth, especially in the latter stages of precious metals bull markets. Silver, according to Rule, is the most volatile among precious metals, offering a unique leverage to investors savvy enough to navigate its peaks and troughs. But why does Rick Rule believe now is the time for silver? It's a confluence of factors that go beyond mere speculation. First, there's the historical context. Rule reminisces about the 1970s, a time when silver made extravagant moves that captured the imagination of investors worldwide. These movements were not just numbers on a chart, they were a demonstration of silver's ability to outperform, to deliver returns that few other investments could match. The speculative appeal of silver, while significant, is just one piece of the puzzle. Rule dives deeper into the dynamics of supply and demand that make silver an intriguing investment. Unlike many other commodities, a substantial portion of silver production is a byproduct of mining for other metals. This unique aspect of silver's supply chain adds a layer of complexity to predicting its availability and, by extension, its price. The role of recycling and the existence of substantial, albeit unknown, above-ground stockpiles further muddle the waters, creating a scenario ripe for surprises and opportunities. But it's not just about the supply. Rick Rule points to the growing industrial demand for silver, highlighting its indispensability in sectors poised for exponential growth renewable energy, electronics, and medical technologies. This isn't just a bet on a precious metal. It's a strategic investment in the future of technology and sustainability. Amidst this backdrop, Rick Rule's strategy for silver shines through. With an allocation of around 2.5% of his portfolio to silver and silver stocks, he's not just preaching a good game. He's putting his money where his mouth is. This level of commitment, 
balanced with a keen awareness of the risks involved, exemplifies the calculated approach required to capitalize on silver's potential. As we peel back the layers of Rick Rule's stance on silver, what emerges is a narrative of opportunity, underscored by a deep respect for the market's complexities. Rule's approach isn't about chasing the latest trend or making a quick profit, it's about understanding the underlying factors that drive value, recognizing the potential before it becomes obvious to the masses. In the grand tapestry of the silver market, Rick Rule's insights serve as a guide, pointing us toward a future where the undervalued becomes invaluable. As we continue our journey through the world of silver investing, let Rule's wisdom inspire us to look beyond the surface, to see the potential that awaits those bold enough to embrace the volatility and uncertainty that define this precious metal. I'll do my best to unpack it. First of all, I'm delighted with the information from the Silver Institute because neither Keith nor I have the resources to understand anything like the totality of the silver market. At the Silver Institute, they have a bunch of smart young researchers who do, who do nothing else full time. Uh, and, and the report, uh, which I've studied in some detail, is an interesting read. It talks about the fact that there's a primary deficit uh, for 2024 of approximately 1.2 billion ounces. It's important to note that the report doesn't attempt to categorize above ground inventories for the simple reason that nobody knows. A whole bunch of silver constitutes private wealth, particularly in South Asia. When people hold private wealth to shield themselves from their government, they very seldom uh, identify that private wealth to the government. So we don't know <laughs> what the above ground inventories are like. What we do know uh, is that the low price for silver has made primary silver mining, that is to say silver produced from silver mines, uneconomic or marginally economic in most cases. Most silver, in fact, is produced as a byproduct of copper mines, lead mines, zinc mines, or gold mines. And it is true that a recession which reduced copper, lead, and zinc production uh, would probably have a deleterious impact on silver production, but silver demand might fall too, which is to say, if you are concerned about a recession, be concerned about the silver price. It will be a mixed blessing. It will reduce supply. It might reduce demand. It is important, though, to note that the low silver price right now depresses the biggest source of silver production, which is recycling. For many industrial applications at $24 or $25 silver, the value of the money recovered in recycling operations is not enough to justify the recycling. And the industrial uses of silver are growing very rapidly. Uh, it's reflective properties and conductive properties make it absolutely a, a, a necessary component of solar energy, hence uh, the Chinese fascination with silver. But importantly, too, silver is a wonderful germicide, uh, and there are very rapid increases in utilization in water and wastewater treatment, in sanitation, and in medical uh, maybe the fastest growing application that we're seeing with regards to silver happens here. It's also important to note, though, that the quantum increases in silver price that we've seen occasionally in the past are really a, faction, uh, a, pardon me, a function of investment and speculative demand. We've noted on your show before, Dunnigan, that historically precious metals bull markets are led by gold. They're led by the fear buyer. And when the narrative gains popular currency among generalist investors, that commodity with a lower unit price, which is to say silver, begins to move further and faster. So I think silver speculators will need to watch the gold market. I think it's important, too, to note that in every currency other than the U.S. dollar, we're in a gold bull market. <laughs> uh, so I think that's important. In the intricate world of precious metals, where every ounce in every mine has a story, Silver presents a narrative unlike any other. It's a tale woven with threads of innovation, scarcity, and untapped potential. A narrative that beckons us to explore the depths of the silver supply conundrum. To truly understand the potential of silver, we must venture into the heart of its supply chain, a journey that reveals why this metal is on the cusp of a historic revaluation. At the core of silver's story is its production, a process that defies the simplicity of direct mining. Unlike gold, which often sees the light of day through dedicated endeavors, silver plays a more elusive role, emerging predominantly as a byproduct of mining for other metals such as copper, lead, and zinc. 
This fundamental aspect of silver's supply introduces a layer of complexity to its market dynamics. It means that silver's availability is intricately tied to the demand and market conditions of these other metals, making its supply less responsive to silver price changes. In a world where supply and demand dictate market movements, this unique characteristic of silver production adds an unpredictable twist to its investment thesis. But the story doesn't end with mining. Recycling plays a pivotal role in silver's supply chain, contributing significantly to the market. From industrial scrap to discarded electronics, silver is reclaimed and reintroduced, a testament to its enduring value and versatility. However, the extent of recycling and its impact on overall supply remain fluid, influenced by technological advancements and economic viability. Amidst these supply dynamics, the specter of above-ground stockpiles looms large. These stockpiles, accumulated over centuries, hold the potential to sway the market in ways that are difficult to predict. The exact size of these reserves is shrouded in mystery, a variable that adds another layer of intrigue to silver's valuation. In regions like South Asia, where cultural and historical affinities for silver run deep, these stockpiles represent not just a financial asset, but a cultural heritage, further complicating the supply narrative. The confluence of these factors, byproduct production, recycling, and above-ground stockpiles, creates a supply landscape for silver that is as fascinating as it is complex. It's a landscape where traditional supply-demand models struggle to capture the full picture, where the potential for supply shocks and unexpected market movements is ever-present. As investors, understanding this conundrum is crucial. It's not merely about recognizing the current state of silver's supply, but about anticipating the ships that lie ahead. The growing industrial demand for silver, particularly in areas like renewable energy, electronics and medical applications, sets the stage for a dramatic rebalancing of the supply-demand equation. With new uses for silver emerging at a pace that supply might struggle to meet, the stage is set for a revaluation of silver's worth. This exploration of silver's supply dynamics is more than an academic exercise. It's a journey into the heart of what makes silver an investment with untapped potential. As we peel back the layers of complexity surrounding its production and availability, we uncover the reasons why silver, this enigmatic metal with a dual personality, is poised for a future where its value is recognized and its potential unleashed. Stay tuned as we continue our deep dive into the silver market, exploring the industrial demand that drives its price and the strategic investment opportunities it presents. In the world of precious metals, silver stands on the brink of a renaissance, a precious commodity whose time in the spotlight is just beginning. Supply and the demand. I suspect that you are continuing to see leakage of physical uh, silver inventories held by individuals, particularly in South Asia, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. Those societies have uh, a millennium long uh, fascination for silver. They have a need for a store of wealth outside their domestic currencies, which are inflated away. And the consequence of that is what the silver price does well in their own currency rather than in the U.S. dollar. Uh, they often dishoard that silver uh, to use to meet household expenses uh, and things like that. The silver market is devilishly tough to forecast. Because you have to know uh, an awful lot about a lot of things. You have to know a lot about copper markets and lead markets and zinc markets. You have to know uh, about the uh, economy uh, of India. Things like a drought can actually impact silver supply as peasants dishoard their silver to feed their families. Uh, so it's important to note that even an organization like the Silver Institute that has all of the resources which it can employ studying the silver market. <laughs> can In an era where technological innovation and sustainability converge, silver emerges as a critical element underpinning advancements that define our modern lifestyle and drive forward our green energy aspirations. The industrial demand for silver, far from being a static factor, is a dynamic force pulsating through the veins of global industries, ready to catapult silver into the investment spotlight. Silver's role in the industrial sector is multifaceted and indispensable. Its unparalleled electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and resistance to corrosion make it a key component in an array of applications, from electronics and solar panels to batteries and medical devices. Each of these sectors not only relies on silver, but is also on a trajectory of rapid growth, spurred by global trends towards renewable energy, digitalization, and advanced healthcare solutions. The solar energy sector, in particular, stands out as a voracious consumer of silver, 
utilizing it in photovoltaic cells for the efficient conversion of sunlight into electricity. As nations around the globe commit to reducing carbon emissions and transitioning to renewable energy sources, the demand for solar panels, and by extension, silver, is expected to soar. This burgeoning demand is not merely speculative. It's backed by substantial investment and policy initiatives aimed at accelerating the adoption of solar energy, highlighting silver's critical role in achieving a sustainable future. Similarly, the electronics industry continues to expand its horizons with silver at its core. From smartphones and tablets to electric vehicles and smart appliances, silver's exceptional conductive properties are integral to the functionality and efficiency of these devices. As the digital transformation of our society accelerates, fueled by the advent of 5G, IoT, Internet of Things, and beyond, the demand for silver is set to escalate, reflecting its indispensable nature in the technological ecosystem. Moreover, the medical field increasingly turns to silver for its antimicrobial properties, employing it in dressings, coatings, and medical devices to prevent infections. In a world where health and hygiene are paramount, silver's role in medical applications underscores its value beyond its luster, contributing to its growing demand. Yet the rise in industrial demand for silver is not without its challenges. It presents a double-edged sword. On one hand, it signifies a bright future for silver, driven by its critical role in essential and growing industries. On the other hand, it raises questions about the sustainability of supply, especially considering silver's complex production dynamics and finite above-ground reserves. This juxtaposition of soaring demand against the backdrop of supply concerns lays the groundwork for silver's potential price appreciation. As industries across the globe increasingly rely on silver, the pressure on its supply chain intensifies, setting the stage for a significant revaluation of its market price. It's a scenario that savvy investors are watching closely, recognizing the opportunity to invest in a commodity that is not only precious but also indispensable to the future of technology and sustainability. As we navigate through the intricacies of the silver market, the industrial demand for silver stands as a testament to its enduring value and potential for growth. It's a compelling narrative that invites investors to look beyond traditional investment paradigms, to see silver not just as a hedge against inflation or economic uncertainty, but as a strategic asset poised for exponential growth. Join us as we continue our exploration of the silver market, uncovering the investment strategies that leverage its industrial demand and anticipate its trajectory towards revaluation. In the realm of precious metals, silver's story is being rewritten, driven by demand that spans across industries and the globe, heralding a new era for investors ready to tap into its latent potential. I don't know about the extent that will happen that that could happen. You and I have talked before, Dunnigan, about the fact that uh, futures markets and silver paper markets often trade 200 times in a day the amount of silver available for physical delivery. <laughs> Mostly, these trades don't settle in physical. Mostly, they're rolled over, uh, and only the differences are settled in physical. You could have a situation where you had a seller default, and that would be a truly ugly thing. Now, don't think that you're going to get a short squeeze, a, a real short squeeze. Uh, what will happen is that the exchanges likely will shut down for a while and they'll cash settle. But they'll cash settle if that, if that happened at a price much higher than today's price. So what, what really bothers me is that you have uh, a market where uh, the sort of gro gross trade position – is in the billions of ounces, and the physical silver available for settlement is in the 60 or 70 million ounce range, you have the possibility for a truly severe disruption given the extraordinary leverage in the silver market. And by the way, uh, many of the things that silver bugs traditionally identify with silver price manipulation have to do precisely with this. I'm not a believer that there's a decade long or two decade long or three decade long conspiracy to manipulate the price of silver. But I note that trade desks manipulate every market, including markets as broad as the euro dollar, the euro and the US dollar. Manipulating the silver market where you take a leveraged position long or short in the futures market, which is often levered three or 400 to one against the physical market. And then using borrowed physical silver to dump into the physical market at some point in time during a 25 hour period, 24 hour period, pardon me, 
where the trading volumes uh, are fairly small. In other words, you maximize the amount of damage that you do to the physical market to maximize the leverage gain that you get in the futures market. Uh, I think that's been happening continually for about 20 years. The temptation to do it where you can sell, say, $50 million worth of silver, which you have to pay interest on, to move the silver market 5 or 6% down and then have that 5 or 6% reflected in a futures market where you have a $500 million or a $1 billion leveraged long position uh, means that you can, if you play your cards right, uh, generate a 50% return on capital employed uh, in a two or three week period. The temptation to do this is, of course, extraordinary. And the leveraged function of the futures market makes this fairly easy for deep pocketed players, sophisticated players to accomplish. In the shadowy corners of financial markets, whispers of manipulation often circulate, casting doubt and stirring controversy among investors. The silver market, with its dramatic swings and unexplained anomalies, has not been immune to such speculations. But to navigate these turbulent waters with clarity, we must separate fact from fiction, grounding our understanding in the realities of market dynamics and expert analysis. Rick Rule, a sage in the realm of precious metals investing, offers a lens through which to examine the claims of manipulation in the silver market. With decades of experience and a keen eye for the undercurrents that drive market movements, Rule provides a perspective that is both pragmatic and insightful. He acknowledges that, in the short term, the silver market, like any other, is susceptible to manipulation due to the leveraged nature of futures contracts. These instruments, powerful in their ability to move prices, can indeed create temporary distortions in the market. However, Rule draws a critical distinction between short-term fluctuations and the market's long-term fundamentals. The notion of a systemic long-term manipulation of the silver market, he argues, is less plausible. Such a scheme would require a level of coordination and resources beyond the reach of most market participants, not to mention it would have to contend with the relentless forces of supply and demand. Over time, these fundamental forces exert a corrective pressure, realigning prices with underlying market dynamics. This perspective is not meant to dismiss the experiences of investors who have witnessed suspicious market behavior or to ignore the potential for regulatory lapses. Instead, it serves to highlight the complexity of the silver market where multiple factors, from industrial demand and mining supply to investor sentiment and geopolitical events, interplay to shape prices. In this environment, attributing price movements solely to manipulation oversimplifies the myriad influences at work. Moreover, focusing excessively on the potential for manipulation can divert attention from the strategic considerations essential to successful silver investing. Understanding the market's fundamentals, including the trends in industrial demand, the intricacies of supply dynamics, and the broader economic context is paramount. Investors equipped with this knowledge are better positioned to navigate the market's volatility, identifying opportunities where others see only conspiracy. Rick Rule's advice to investors is grounded in this comprehensive approach. By focusing on the underlying value drivers of silver and employing a disciplined investment strategy, individuals can mitigate the impact of short-term market distortions, whether they stem from manipulation or other sources. This approach not only enhances the resilience of one's investment portfolio, but also leverages the long-term potential of silver as both a precious metal and an industrial commodity. As we delve deeper into the silver market's complexities, let us carry forward the lessons gleaned from experts like Rick Rule. The path to informed investment in silver lies not in the shadows of market manipulation, but in the light of rigorous analysis and strategic foresight. Embracing this path, investors can unlock the true potential of silver navigating its peaks and valleys with confidence and insight. Stay with us as we continue to explore the multifaceted world of silver investing, where knowledge is not just power, it's profit. In the chapters to come, we will unveil the strategies that seasoned investors use to capitalize on silver's volatility, turning the uncertainties of today into the fortunes of tomorrow. Why is to position yourself in it? Uh, what I find is when a topic becomes popular, the easy money has been made. You and I talked three years ago about uh, uranium, Dunnigan, uh, to the collective yawn of most people. When the price of uranium was at 20 bucks and had to go up, nobody wanted to own it. Now that uranium is at 100 bucks and it doesn't have to go up, everybody wants to own it. When I see uh, silver uh, on the cover of Barron's magazine or something like that, 
when I see all of the scamsters that are, you know, currently selling psilocybin stocks or uh, AI stocks or lithium stocks crowding into the silver space, I'll be looking to take my exit. Uh, yes, by the way, I have some sold some uranium stocks. When uh, a commodity goes from hated to unhated, it doesn't have to go to loved. When it goes from hated to unhated, the easy money has been made. Silver disappointed so many newcomers during the silver squeeze. Uh, and by the way, there's nobody angrier than a jilted lover. Uh, that it's truly hated. Uh, when I look at the comments that will accompany this interview after it's been published, many people will say, I can't believe this guy's droning on about silver. It hasn't done anything. That's precisely why I like it. Because it hasn't done anything. I like it because there's no competition. I, I want your viewers to look at me. Look at my face. I'm a 71-year-old, bald, fat, aged male. And I can win the 100-yard dash if I'm the only guy that shows up to run. I love markets where I have no competition. And silver is a speculative market that's just that. And the silver stocks themselves are even more beat up, which is even better. Uh, they're uh, a higher leveraged. Uh, more speculative, more alpha-oriented play, not for weaklings, not for people who don't have the courage of their convictions over a long weekend. Uh, but the truth is, Dunnigan, and I've, I've cited these statistics on your show before, when the silver stocks move, there isn't enough combined market cap among the legitimate ones to hold the money from the generalist investors. And you get moves like the silver standard move, 75 cents to $45, uh, like the Pan American silver move, 50 cents to $40, or the granddaddy of all the silver stock moves in the 1970s, Coeur d'Alene mine, 10 cents to $65, not a typo. Now, this isn't for the fate of heart. Use money <laughs> that you can stomach volatility on. Be prepared to wait for 18 months or two years. Uh, but that's not too long to wait for a 10-bagger. If you have the financial and psychological fortitude to take. In the realm of precious metals, where volatility is not so much a risk as it is a reality, mastering the art of strategic investment becomes paramount. Silver, with its dual allure as both an industrial powerhouse and a monetary safeguard, offers a unique canvas upon which savvy investors can paint their financial futures. But how does one approach this market with a strategy that balances the potential for significant gains against the inherent risks? The answer lies in embracing a multifaceted approach that combines a deep understanding of market fundamentals with a disciplined investment philosophy. First and foremost, successful silver investing begins with a solid foundation in the metal's supply and demand dynamics. Recognizing the factors that drive silver prices, be it industrial demand, mining supply constraints, or macroeconomic trends, is crucial. This understanding allows investors to anticipate market movements, identifying opportunities where others seek chaos, for instance, the burgeoning demand for silver in renewable energy technologies and electronic devices signals long-term growth prospects, a fundamental driver that can outweigh short-term market fluctuations. However, knowledge alone is not sufficient. Discipline, a cornerstone of Rick Rule's investment strategy, plays a vital role in navigating the silver market. It involves setting clear investment goals, establishing parameters for buying and selling, and perhaps most importantly, exercising patience. The volatility of silver can test the resolve of even the most seasoned investors, making discipline in adhering to one's strategy a critical determinant of success. Diversification within the silver market itself is another strategy that Rick Rule advocates. Not all silver investments are created equal. Options range from physical silver holdings and ETFs to mining stocks and speculative exploration ventures. Each carries its own risk-reward profile, influenced by factors beyond the price of silver alone. For example, Mining stocks can offer leverage to the price of silver, amplifying gains during bullish market phases, but also increasing risk during downturns. Balancing these various investment vehicles according to one's risk tolerance and investment horizon can mitigate risks while maximizing potential returns. Risk management, a concept intrinsically linked to diversification, is yet another pillar of strategic silver investing. This involves not only spreading investments across different types of silver assets, but also maintaining a broader portfolio balance that includes other asset classes. The aim is to protect oneself from silver's price volatility without foregoing the opportunity for significant gains. 
rules own guideline of allocating a portion of one's portfolio to silver and silver stocks, around 2.5%, reflects a measured approach to capturing the metal's upside while guarding against its unpredictability. Lastly, staying informed and adaptive is essential in a market as dynamic as silver. The conditions that today make silver an attractive investment can shift, influenced by technological advancements, geopolitical events, or changes in consumer behavior. An investor's ability to adapt their strategy in response to these changes, to buy more when the market is fearful, and to take profits when euphoria reigns, can be the difference between mediocre returns and extraordinary success. As we delve into the strategies that underpin successful silver investing, let us take inspiration from the disciplined, informed, and adaptive approach advocated by experts like Rick Rule. The path to profitability in the silver market is not linear, it is fraught with challenges and opportunities alike. Yet, for those armed with knowledge, discipline, and a strategic mindset, silver offers a world of potential, a chance to not just weather the storms of market volatility, but to sail forth into a prosperous future. In the following sections, we will continue to explore the intricacies of silver investment, offering insights and strategies that aim to equip investors with the tools they need to unlock the full potential of this enigmatic metal. And the demand side can be similarly difficult, although it's important to note that right now at these silver prices, there is a supply deficit, which is to say the amount of silver produced in all sectors, primary production, co-production and recycling is substantially less than global consumption for fabrication. Uh, it's important to know that. Uh, what is unknowable, at least by me, is what the above ground inventories are <laughs> and where they're available for sale. So mm -hmm. the fact that there is a primary deficit, uh, while it's relevant, is a very difficult thing to gauge fundamentally because most of the supply uh, that's ever been mined still constitutes in some way, shape, or form supply. Silver bulls, uh, if there are any left, uh, other perhaps than myself, uh, should get solace from the fact that industrial utilization and application of silver is growing very rapidly. The solar industry, as an example, doesn't exist without the reflective properties of silver. All of the all of the new solar panels that you see in northern Europe, where the sun doesn't shine. Uh, are, of course, dependent on solar, uh, pardon me, on silver. Uh, but importantly, uh, new utilizations of silver uh, are uh, occurring. It is fairly durable. It's fairly malleable. It's fairly conductive. And as a consequence of that, and by the way, it's cheaper than gold, of course, as a consequence of that, the utilization of silver in the fabrication of electronics is growing rapidly. But silver is also a superb germicide. Uh, which means that medical applications, water treatment applications, and sewerage treatment applications of silver, making use of its germicidal properties, uh, are probably the fastest growing uh, new uh, technological innovations uh, around silver. And, and I think it's important for people to note that. Um, one of the things that I've always laughed about with regards to the gold market is that with regards to gold, we usually take it out of a hole in the ground called a mine, and then we put it in a hole in the ground called a vault. Uh, with regards to silver, uh, an awful lot of it is used. Now, some of it is, of course, as we said before, recycled. Uh, it comes back into supply, but a lot of it doesn't. A lot of it is just plain used, and I think that's important. The price of silver, however, does not seem to be set by supply-demand imbalances, perhaps because the supply is so difficult to understand and forecast, <laughs> as is the demand. Uh, a, a lot of silver is held off balance sheets, again, partic uh, particularly in South Asia. And it's difficult to know exactly what demand is there because people are using it precisely because it isn't a government currency. Uh, it, it's used as protection from their government. Uh, and those people are wisely unwilling to disclose uh, wealth that they are trying to protect from their own governments. 
This I can tell you. Uh, when demand for silver, investment demand for silver picks up, the price of the stuff is extraordinarily volatile uh, to the upside. Mm -hmm. um, I have watched now, I guess three times in my life, uh, the silver pl price flirt with 50 U US dollars. The first time from a dollar 20 start. The second time, if my memory serves me well, from a $4 start. The third time, if my memory serves me well, from a $15 start. Uh, in each case, while the gains that were possible in the metal were lovely, the gains that were possible in the stocks for people who paid attention to the stocks, uh, people who actually did real research, uh, and in particular, people that had the courage to buy them when they were out of favor, were extraordinary. Uh, my friend Doug Casey, who if you haven't interviewed, you should at some point in time, uh, famously said uh, at the New Orleans Investment Conference years ago that the market capitalization of silver equities is insufficient to accommodate the inflows of capital from generalist investors when the precious, precious metals narrative takes hold. His colorful illustration uh, was that when the generalist investors' money began to crowd into the silver equities, the result was like trying to siphon Hoover Dam through a garden hose. Uh, and I've witnessed this. Uh, the aforementioned Coeur d'Alene was, of course, the most dramatic example from 10 cents to $65. But in my own experience in the early 90s, when silver was out of favor, I had the good fortune to participate in the construction of two, two silver companies, Silver Standard Mines, now SSR Resources, and Pan American Silver, now Pan American Silver. Uh, the beginning point for both of those occurred with silver below five US dollars an ounce. Uh, Silver Standard, if my memory serves me correctly, we financed at 72 cents with a full warrant. Six or so years later, the stock was trading for $45. Pan American, I know this time my memory serves me correct, we financed at 50 cents a share. Uh, and in six or seven years, that stock also crested at $45. This gives you some indication uh, why there is a subset of investors, or pardon me, a subset of speculators who are maniacal about silver, hmm. uh, simply because of its upside volatility. People tend to view that upside volatility in an almost religious fashion which is to say that when silver speculators, for whatever reason, believe that silver should move uh, and it doesn't move, they assume that all is wrong with the world. In a world where economic cycles ebb and flow with increasing unpredictability, the sage investor not only seeks growth but fortification, preparing for inevitable downturns with assets that offer protection and stability. Silver, with its centuries-long history as a store of value, emerges as a beacon of security in the tumultuous seas of financial markets. But how can investors harness silver's potential to safeguard their wealth against the storms of economic crisis? Understanding the practicalities of silver as a financial lifeboat is key to navigating these turbulent times. Silver's role in financial preparedness is twofold, as an asset that historically retains value and as a medium of exchange in scenarios where traditional currency systems falter. The recent economic upheavals have reignited interest in silver and gold, as foundational elements of a crisis-ready portfolio. To quantify this, we turn to practical advice on how much silver one might need to weather a financial storm. The amount of silver required for financial crisis hinges on two critical factors, the anticipated duration of the crisis and one's monthly expenses. A pragmatic approach to this calculation considers the worst-case scenario, prolonged economic instability, and aligns one's holdings with the need to cover essential expenses. For instance, if one aims to supplement a $500 monthly shortfall for a year, a substantial amount of silver could be required, considering both its current value and potential appreciation during times of crisis. This methodology extends beyond mere speculation. 
It's about embedding a layer of financial security into one's portfolio. Silver's liquidity, coupled with its potential for appreciation in times of economic distress, makes it an ideal candidate for this role. However, the strategy doesn't advocate for a hoarding mentality, but for a balanced approach to accumulation, one that reflects thoughtful consideration of one's financial landscape and the broader economic indicators. Moreover, integrating silver into one's crisis planning is not merely about possession, but also about accessibility. The physical holding of silver coins or bullies ensures that, regardless of the state of financial institutions or electronic trading platforms, one has a tangible asset that can serve as a medium of exchange or a wealth reserve. This physicality, intrinsic to silver's allure, underscores its value beyond the markets. It's a tangible assurance in an increasingly intangible financial world. Yet the wisdom in leveraging silver for financial crisis lies not just in accumulation, but in the strategic deployment of this asset. Diversifying within silver holdings, across coins, bullion, and even silver-related securities, can optimize liquidity and potential gains, providing a nuanced shield against economic downturns. It's a strategy that mirrors the broader principles of investment diversification, tailored to the unique attributes and advantages of silver. As we dissect the practical aspects of silver and crisis readiness, let's remember that this metal's value transcends its price per ounce. It's a symbol of enduring wealth, a tool for financial stability, and a testament to the foresight of those who choose to embrace it. In the chapters ahead, we will delve deeper into the mechanics of building a silver portfolio that not only aims for growth, but stands as a bulwark against the uncertainties of the future. Stay with us as we continue to navigate the complexities of silver investment, weaving through the strategies that can transform this ancient metal into a modern-day financial fortress. The journey of investing in silver is as much about seizing opportunities as it is about securing peace of mind in an unpredictable economic landscape. In the tapestry of investment opportunities, silver has emerged as a thread woven with potential, resilience, and historical significance. As we stand on the precipice of economic transformations, the question of silver's role in securing a prosperous retirement becomes paramount. The insights gleaned from industry stalwarts, the evolving dynamics of the silver market, and the undercurrents of global economic trends point us toward a future where silver is not just a relic of the past, but a cornerstone of wealth preservation. To retire comfortably, integrating silver into one's investment portfolio requires a nuanced approach, one that balances ambition with prudence. The notion of holding a specific quantity of silver, while appealing in its simplicity, belies the complexity of personal financial goals, market volatility, and the unpredictable nature of economic cycles. However, drawing upon the wisdom shared by experts and the historical performance of silver during times of inflation and economic uncertainty, a strategic allocation to silver can significantly enhance the robustness of one's retirement planning. Envisioning silver's price soaring to the heights of $2,789 might seem like a leap into the realms of speculation. Yet, when we dissect the confluence of factors at play, the finite nature of silver reserves, the burgeoning demand across a spectrum of industrial applications, and the growing investor appetite for safe haven assets, the potential for such an ascent becomes less a matter of if and more a question of when. The industrial demand, particularly for renewable energy and technological innovations, coupled with investment demand in the face of currency devaluation, sets the stage for a dramatic revaluation of silver. So how much silver should one hold? While there's no one-size-fits-all answer, considering silver as a significant portion of one's investment portfolio, especially in the context of diversification and risk management, is prudent. Allocating a portion of your portfolio to silver, in alignment with your risk tolerance, investment horizon, and retirement goals, can provide both a hedge against inflation and a potential source of substantial growth. The journey to $2,789 per ounce of silver will undoubtedly be marked by volatility and uncertainty. But for those prepared to navigate these waters, the rewards could be transformative. As we conclude this exploration of silver's potential, let us part with a reminder that the paths to financial security and prosperity are as diverse as the investors who walk them. While the allure of silver, underpinned by solid fundamentals and a vision for its meteoric rise, presents a compelling narrative, it is essential to approach this or any investment with diligence, education, and a clear understanding of the risks involved. This journey through the silver market, enriched by expert insights and analysis, is provided for informational purposes only is not intended as financial or investment advice. The decision to invest in silver, and the extent of that investment, should be made in consultation with financial professionals who can help navigate the complexities of the market, align strategies with personal financial objectives, 
and ensure a balanced and informed approach to securing your financial future. In the end, the story of silver is not just about its potential price elevation, but about its enduring value as a pillar of financial stability and a beacon of opportunity in an ever-changing economic landscape. As we forge ahead, may the insights shared here serve not only as a guide, but as an inspiration to explore the possibilities that silver, this timeless metal, offers to those poised for the future.